Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings with a Hedgehog. Cheers. Now today, after the excitement of last week's Duro, I forgot to mention that I might have had another pen arrive. So today we're going to talk about this. What's this? This, my friends, is a Conway Stewart Belliver in Mocha. Mm. This it is about 13 and a quarter, maybe a little bit more centimetres. Uncapped, it's 12 and three quarters. And posted, it's a lot longer than my ruler can cope with. Let's just have a look at this. That'll be 5, 10, 15, 16 and a half centimetres, I'd say. So it's a really good size, very, very good weight. So if that's that, let's look at the Duro. That's 19, 18 even. So significant difference in weight. It's about double the weight of the Duro. Let's put that into perspective. What's it like compared to my Visconti Homo Sapiens? That's 40. So it is a really chunky little pen, this. And if I... But just look at that acrylic and the way it catches the light. And what I really like is it catches the light while you're writing. So you get these little ghostly swirls of mica, or whatever it is in there, actually as you're writing along, which makes it wonderful to look at. I'd say that out of all the Conway Stewarts I've tried so far, this is level pegging with the Little Wordsworth that I tried, which gave me a similar feeling of size and weight, even though it is a much smaller pen and I don't use pens posted. OK, so externally, description, what's it look like? It's got a nice cap, which... I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a slightly bevelled edge going around the outside. It's not rounded, it's not flat, it's flat with a bevel. The other end is the same. If I can get it to focus, that's better. So you can see it's got a flat section and then there's a bevel around the edge before you get to the actual top. And the same with this flat spot. I hadn't realised you could demonstrate the little flat spot so easily. That's nice. Clip. Really good, strong Conway Stewart type clip. Very, very good. I like the three rings here. They just give a little bit of variety. That's rather nice. Apart from that, I don't think there's much you can say about the cap. All the same material, whether it's the front section, the back, the top of the cap, all exactly the same material. This feels lovely. It's a slight taper from here. It tapers down at both ends, but there's a flaring towards the nib so your fingers don't slip straight off. Good size nib. It's one of these flag nibs, which means it's got a good degree of flexibility. It's a medium nib, but it writes... Mm, I don't know how to put it really. Very, very smooth anyway. We'll get on to writing later. Apart from that, two spacer golden sections here. And I should just say that... Although it is extremely unlikely you'll be able to see it, there is faint hallmarking along here. So it is properly hallmarked as gold. I forgot last week to mention almost all Conway Stewarts are cartridge converters. This is no exception. And 
So you can use cartridge converter or universal cartridges, such as Diamine's range, which I'm rather fond of, and partial to. And it is a superb writer. I have been using it for quite some time now, because it arrived at the same time as the Duro. And although I haven't been using it in this paper so much, here we have some Tomo River, which is always a good example. I've been using it a little bit. And one thing that did surprise me, using this new camera setup, it's an absolute delight because it makes it so much easier to write. One thing I do find surprising is this is diamine sepia and it's got a gorgeous golden honey type of colour to it with this pen. This pen has also got diamine sepia. Now, I don't know if this is this much darker because I didn't clean the pen out properly last time I used it or because it's a factor of the way that the nib works on a Visconti that makes it lay down a darker line because Viscontis do tend to throw a lot of ink at any paper but I'm just impressed by the difference there unless of course I've just forgotten and put a different ink in that but I don't think I have I think that is sepia so this pen, and then there's the Duro from last week. Both of them are really quite stunning. Which do I prefer? Absolutely no doubt. For me, this is just about perfect. I love the nib, writes beautifully, good variation. Look at the shading you get with that diamine sepia. You can see how wet it is because it's still wet now. But in terms of appearance, I think that resin or acrylic or whatever it's made of is absolutely beautiful and vastly preferable to the Duro. Don't know why, there's just something about it that really appeals to me. I love the brown colour, I love these whitish swirls going through it, and I absolutely adore the shimmering that goes on inside. I love that nib. As a medium, it really, really 
I, I think it's stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. I love the weight. I love the balance. I never post my pens because I'm always too scared of making tiny scratches on the back end. And I think it just feels unbalanced. That to me is an almost perfect size. It's absolutely beautiful in the hand. The weight is good. The Duro I found a little bit too light. And it's slim enough it feels it could stay in my hand for quite a number of hours in the same way as the Wordsworth just seem to fit. They, they have a really good size. It's not too big. It will fit in a shirt pocket and clip on. I like the fact that it's cartridge converter because that's very convenient when you're out and about. Yes, I, I have to admit I adore this pen. I think it's wonderful. Absolutely gorgeous to look at and it's going to be a wrench to send it back. So in summary, two pens, a Duro and a Beliver. What did I think about them? I wrote it up here actually. Green for the Duro. I like the style and look. Didn't like having a black section. Matter of personal taste. I love the way that the acrylic shimmered in the light. That goes for both of them. The nib was an absolute surprise to me. It was a B. Not huge flex, which I'd expected, but I was surprised, as you can see here, by how thick it would write compared to writing lightly with it. Strange. The pen was light too light for my liking. It's very, I can imagine a lot of people would like it because it will fit in any pocket very easily, won't make your pocket drag like my pens tend to, but a bit too light in the hand for me. Very very convenient, easily pocketable, so yeah very good. The Beliver I think was just stunningly beautiful. The resin I think was superior in looks for me, personal taste, nothing more than that. The medium nib I thought was gorgeous. Good and flexible, really nice feel, little bit of feedback, very, very good. Works well, I thought, um, on Tomo River, William Hanna paper, just about everything I put it, I put it to. Main thing for me though was that the pen, I think that mocha resin is stunningly gorgeous. Really, really nice. I like the weight. I loved the way it felt when you wrote with it. But it's the weight and the balance that really came to me. I, I just loved it. Absolutely loved it. So if I was to be a fellow who was interested in various different types of pen. The two that I've had so far that have stood out for me as my favourite Conway Stewart's, certainly the favourites that I've tested of the current batch have been the Wordsworth and the Beliver. 
which is odd because they're two of the smaller pens. I wouldn't have expected to like them quite so much as, say, the Churchill. But to me, these two win hands down. There you have it. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed that, please go to the bottom. There's a Patreon link and you can help support the channel. Wouldn't that be nice? Other than that, go down to the very bottom. There's a comment section where you can remind me of all the things I forgot to put in. You can also 